We are going to go ahead and get started. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the webinar, Learn About Five Great Overnight, or also known as Sleepaway Camps. My name is Elizabeth Aloni, and I'm with Schneps Media, the parent company of New York Family. We proudly publish over 80 magazines, newspapers, websites, webinars, podcasts, and events throughout Manhattan, Queens, Brooklyn, the Bronx, Staten Island, Westchester, Long Island, the East End, Philadelphia, and now Palm Beach, Florida. So we are thrilled to have you with us today for a very important webinar all about learning the right camp for your child. It can sometimes be a daunting task. A New York family is thrilled to be able to help you by introducing you to five great sleep boy camps. Our panel of camp directors will introduce their camps and they'll tell you about the fun options in store for your child this summer. Let me get started with introducing you to all of our panelists. First, let me start by saying welcome to Adam Bendenson and Dina Stevenson of Surprise Lake Camp. Welcome. Hi. <laughs> good morning or good afternoon. <laughs> That's right. And next, please welcome Phil Williams of Camp Wachusett. Hi, Phil. Hello. Welcome Zach Eigenbrot of Forest, Frost Valley YMCA. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. And next, say hello to Lori Caden of Main Camp Experience. Hi, everyone. Thanks <laughs> for joining. And last but certainly not least is Gia Kadaspati of Independent Lake. Hi, great to, great to meet with everyone this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> We're so happy to have you all here and looking forward to what you can share with us. So to get started, I wanted to ask, you know, what is it that parents should focus on when they're looking for an overnight camp? Let me get started with Adam and Dina from Surprise Lake Camp. What can you share that parents should focus on? Thanks, Elizabeth. I think it's a great question. You know, I'm a parent. I have four kids. So, you know, the things that I think parents should focus on are, you know, you want to know that your child's in a safe environment and one in which they're going to be cared for. You know, when they're out of your care, you want to know if someone else is taking as good a care of them as you would. Um, some other things, what's the emphasis of the camp? Is it a traditional camp with a wide variety of activities, or is there a specific emphasis? Um, some other things might be, what's your budget for camp? Um, is the session length right for my child? And lastly, is my child ready for sleepaway camp? You know, we speak to the parents and the campers to determine whether or not we're the right fit for them. Um, and for a lot of families, especially if it's their first child that's going to camp, the transition to independence is as much about the camper as it is about the parent. So I hope great. that helps. It certainly does. Phil, can you share a little bit about what a, you think a parent should focus on? Absolutely. Everything she said certainly was very relevant as well. Um, look at their website, then make a call or uh, email to the director and get a feel for communication. How, how is uh, the camp with communication with parents? Um, also the philosophy of the camp, you know, what, what does the camp try to, um, uh, how do they align themselves with what they're trying to teach um, activities wise, but also philosophically. And uh, it's a great idea to ask to speak with other current families before you make a decision because they're a, another perspective and often the very best to get an idea of why their kids continue to go to that camp. Great ideas, thank you. Zach, what can you share with us that parents should focus on? Yeah, there's not a whole lot more to add. They had really great answers. I think I would echo Dina in terms of safety and making sure that they're Making taking care of great, like taking care of your kid, and, and um, that you can put your trust into that that camp. Um, you know, for me, making sure that their mission aligns with yours and their values align with yours, and um, you know that that's the the direction that you want to go. Um, I think a few other pieces. It's like understanding their staffing and their ratios, um, and like what training goes in to making sure that they're taking care of your your camper um, is also a big big piece and really important piece as well. And so, great advice. Add those views. Lori, can you share some more things that parents 
Yes, I can. Definitely. Great, great answers from everyone. I think in addition to safety, um, we want to make sure that there's going to be meaningful youth development, that the kids are going to really, um, you know, learn and grow from the experiences that they're having. And um, one thing that I always tell people is, um, you know, think what's going to be best for your child. Don't necessarily pick a camp because a cousin went there or a neighbor goes there or a friend from home goes there. You want to make sure you're doing the right thing for your child. And it may be that camp, but it may not be. And actually, I have two daughters who've been at camp in Maine for a long time. And the camp friends that they've made are separate from their home friends. And I think that's an amazing thing to have. Um, so that's one thing. And I think the other thing is, um, you know, yeah, make sure you are really deciding for this year and for the long run, do you want a short session camp or do you want a full session camp? Like what's your family's interest? Do you have a trip you always take at the end of the summer or do you have fall sports for school? So these are things to think about in year one and beyond, which I know can be tough, um, but you wanna make sure hopefully when you're choosing a camp for the first year, it's gonna be the place your child's gonna to return to summer after summer and build on those um, experiences and relationships. Great, great thoughts for parents. Gia? Hey, yeah, um, I can kind of piggyback off of everyone's answers there. They were also wonderful. <laughs> you'll be first, um, you'll be the first answer for the next one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, Lori um, just mentioned, um, you know, kind of picking a camp that's important for, to you and um, what's going to work for your child, not necessarily, um, you know, what your what your family and friends um, are just doing, um, you know, so so get the information from the family and friends, um, but kind of look at what factors um, are important to your family and what's going to work for your child for, for that summer, right? There's so, so many, I mean, all the camps are amazing, like camping as an industry, um, you know, it's it's wonderful for for child youth development, um, and so you just need to kind of find the right fit, um, and that might include looking at the camp's philosophy, looking at programming, looking at activity offers. Um, Dina mentioned. Um, safety. I think everyone on this call right now is um, American Camp Association accredited. Um, so you can um, kind of look into that as well. So there's that's kind of like an overarching um, sort of set of guidelines that we sort of all take into account being caregivers of, of children as far as our operations and our management and our programming. So um, we're sort of all on the same page um, about that. And you just kind of have to kind of pick and choose what what sort of works well, well for you, you and your family. So it's a little bit of a mix of like, you know, this checklist of questions that you need to ask and then also putting in that mix how you feel and, and what feels right for your child. So, you know, both of those, all of those elements are so important. Um, you know, what I wanted to find out too, you know, you mentioned, Phil, you mentioned camp director. How important is a relationship with the camp director? Because, I mean, very often that would be the first person you'd be involved with. Um, so Gia, do you want to get us started with this? And also tell everyone where, where Independent Lake Camp is located. Sure. Uh, yeah. So um, we are one of the Wayne County camps. So in the northeast corner of Pennsylvania. Um, so usually that's about three, three and a half hours from, from New York City area. Um, and um, as far as the relationship with, with the director, that's it's oftentimes, um, you know, one of the people that you Kind of have these this first connection with um, at a camp, um, and you know, talking to kind of full full time year round administrative staff as well. You can kind of get a sense of. Um, you know, where where their team is coming from um, and, and where their, their mission lies, right? So you can kind of hear it in, in everything that they talk about, about their camp. Um, and, you know, there's, there's a sort of obvious effort um, to have an alignment between directors and parents, right? And so that starts before your camper even gets to camp. Right, we want to have that communication line open um, and have this kind of back and forth so that we can set up your campers uh, for success. And that might be um, through one-on-one -on -one conversations, maybe Zoom talks, maybe home visits um, to kind of get to know the family and um, get to know your needs. Um, for for us, we take a pretty individualized approach um, to to a lot of things that we do, including the camper experience. Um, and so we do want to know 
all those kind of little things and all those camper quirks that um, you know we can we can use in in supporting your camper at camp, especially a first time camper, right? Um, so we we kind of want to know all those little bits and pieces um, so that they have a very successful um, experience, and that will get translated eventually through all these camper forms that you're going to fill out um, before camp, um, camper profiles and health forms and all these kind of things. Um, but know that when you do all of that, we definitely take all of that into consideration. Um, we, we read every single thing. Um, we take out all of those bits and pieces and we convey that to our leadership and our management staff so that we can really set up your, your camper for, for success. You know, whether it be head counselors, um, uh, department managers, camper advocates, uh, medical staff, uh, dining hall staff, um, everything so that that we can really, uh, you know, make it happen for them. <laughs> it's extraordinary. It's always extraordinary to me as a parent to, to think about, you know, all that goes into the camp experience before the campers even put one foot on the camp. Exactly. So it's really, really extraordinary. Lori, can you share with everyone, obviously you're in Maine, but maybe a little bit more about the location and, and the importance of, of camp director and the relationship sure. there? Yes, absolutely. So I am the director and concierge of Maine Camp Experience. Um, I've been with them for actually 10 years, and it's actually a community of 38 different camps that are all independently owned and run in the state of Maine. So they're located throughout the state um, in a few pockets usually. Um, but each camp, as I mentioned, are independently owned and run. And I'm sure you've heard of many of these camps ranging from Laurel to Tacahoe, Vega, North Star, Cohut, I mean, Trip Lake, I could go on um, and, and mention them all, but hopefully you'll visit our site after today. But each camp director, of course, um, at each of these camps has an independent um, personality and viewpoint. And I think a lot of what Gia said is true that, you know, they are the person who is setting the tone. They're dealing with, you know, what staff they're hiring, what programs they're, you know, delivering, things like that. And so a lot of times the director is the person that I think you should speak with when you are deciding which camp you're going to go to because you want to make sure that you align with what they feel. Um, but a lot of times people don't really continue to be in close contact in all honesty with the director because, um, you know, hopefully your child is there and having a great time and you maybe get an update from a division head or um, a head counselor on girl side or boy side. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, obviously they're all reporting to the director and you should believe that your director is going to ensure the safety and the fun for your child. Um, and they're there, I think, you know, as a leader and someone good to talk to at the beginning. And then from there, you'll see. Terrific. Thank you. Zach, what can you share about camp directors and more about your location? Yeah, so we are located in the Catskill Mountains, about two and a half hours north of New York City. Um, and, you know, everything that Dean and Lori said, I, I agree with. Um, like, we we consider this a family experience. I know your camper is getting the direct experience, but um, this is also a big deal for families and, and parents. And so uh, making sure that that relationship is really strong and that there's a level of trust um, is super important. So that communication in the front end um, it's so important making sure they have all of your answers or all of your questions answered and um, and you have a really good idea and a clear uh, vision as to like what camp is going to be for you and for your camper. Um, it's also the conduit of communication, right? Like we are your first point person um, when communicating to camp and then uh, making sure that we're, um, you know, delivering that information to either the counselors or to the camper, depending on what that's going to be. And so, um, you know, I think that relationship needs to be really strong. Uh, and have open communication as to the needs and wants of camp. Terrific, thank you so much. Phil, can you share with us about your location and, and about camp, being a camp director? Absolutely, um, we're located in Vermont, a small area called um, Hoverton, Vermont, and we're on Lake Hortonia. We're a small camp of boys from eight to, ages eight to 15. Um, camp director is like, it, to move you know ahead with what others have said is your point of contact and as i mentioned earlier we really look at communication as being critical back and forth between the parents um, i'm always reachable i'm also the owner of the camp um, we have an ex assistant director an activities director and a head counselor and between us um, we have a combination of 99 years of time at Camp Wachusett, so to speak. So um, all of our counselors 
uh, 95% of them went to the camp and have been there for more than five years. So those are really important things, I think. Um, it, it speaks for people's loyalty and belief in, to, in, in the camp and almost as though it was a second home. But that kind of is rolled into um, the parents seeing that and knowing that um, their, their children are being well cared for well cared for by people who have been there and want to give back. Nice. It's the same experience they had. Thank you. Thank you. Dina and Adam, you want to share about Surprise Lake Camp, where you're located, and um, about the camp director relationship. Adam, you want me to take this or you want to take it? You do this. I'll cover something else. Okay. Um, so we are located about 90 minutes from New York City in the Hudson Valley. Um, we're on about 350 acres and it's just a beautiful site. We're surrounded by mountains, hiking trails. Um, it's, it's become a home away from home for, for many of us. Um, I don't really have much else to add to all the wonderful answers that have already been given. I do know that we spend a lot of time throughout the year communicating with our families in various ways. And, you know, one of the things that I do when I get a new family or a family that's interested is because we're living in the times that we are, we do a lot of our meetings with the campers by Zoom. It's important for us to get to know that child. And it's important for that child to have a face that they're going to recognize if they choose to come to our camp, someone that they already can identify with, someone that they already know has their back and is a point person for them. Then throughout the summer, they have their counselors and their unit supervisors, the social workers, um, all of our other wonderful support staff that are there, including the assistant directors, directors, and executive directors. So there's always someone for a child and a parent to speak with. Communication lines are always open 365 days of the year. We don't close. Uh, so it's important for us, for our families to know that they can contact us at any time whenever they have even the simplest of questions, because what you don't know, you don't know. And some things are not always obvious on a website. So like, I think it was Gia who said, the more information we have, the better we can serve a family. Because it's not just the camper that we're serving, it's their entire family. And oftentimes the parents are the ones that need more from us than a camper necessarily does. Because once they hit camp and they're having fun, they don't want to know from anything else. But sometimes the parent is the one that needs us more. It's so true. I know my, my children go to a sleep boy camp and I know when the first year that they went, I just felt like, wow, it really does take a village. And I feel like they're in the good hands of a good village. So that, that's a really, a really great point. So I want each of you to be able to share about what makes your camp unique. You know, share with us, you know, what you love about your camp and um, you know, what, what parents could know. And I wanna get started with Zach. I want you to, to lead the charge here um, in sharing with us about that. Zach? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I think what's unique for us, so I, I say our location is, is fairly unique. So we are on about 5,500 acres um, of property. Um, and I mentioned our, like we're very remote. Um, and so for us, that creates a really unique opportunity we're tech free. Uh, we don't even have cell phone service where we're at. Um, and so that gives campers a really great opportunity to connect, um, which is our, our big goals, right? Connecting with each other, connecting with nature, um, and really connecting with um, oneself and, and really kind of going from there. Um, we also have a lot to offer. We, we have a bunch of different programs. So we have like our traditional overnight camp, but then we also have adventure programs, so trip and travel. We have a farm program. We have equestrian programs. Um, that are all, all unique and gives something for everyone, um, which is, I think, really important. Uh, most of our programs are co-ed, um, except for uh, we have an all-girls equestrian program um, that we run as well. Um, you know, for us, we're, we're being part of the Y, we have, uh, there's like core values that every YMCA has, and the Frost Valley has eight core values. Um, that's really the direction um, of all of our programs. So though we may have different things that we do, the values is still our driver. Um, and so, the core values of respect, responsibility, caring, and honesty. 
Um, and then diversity, inclusiveness, stewardship, and community, like that is our focus. And that is no matter what activity or programming we're doing, like it's around those values um, and really um, is the direction that we, we want to go. Um, we also have a really high um, staff retention and strong staff retention. And a lot of our staff work campers here. Uh, so again, they truly understand the camp experience and what's important and, and um, having to experience that and be able to then um, share that with other campers is, is really important um, for us. And I think is something that's unique um, as well. And we also try to hire as many staff from around the world as we can. And so I'm um, again, creating um, opportunities just to meet new people and, and be surrounded with people that are unlike yourself and, um, and kind of offer different perspectives and, and things like that. So that's a really um, important piece um, to our camp as well. And Zach, how, many, how many children do you have at your camp and what is the age range? Yeah, campers? great question. So we run four two week sessions um, and we serve campers from seven to 15. Um, so first uh, entering grades two is kind of the youngest of camper that we um, we have um, and kind of each program is a little bit different in terms of their age range and so we like our trips are more focused to teens um, and then all of our other programs are a little bit from that grades two to ten range um, yeah to answer all those questions sorry oh I just also asked how many about how many campers do you yes. have session so is it two week sessions can can people stay longer or is it yeah good question yeah so we serve about a thousand kids per session um but each program is kind of like they operate a little bit on their own and so um like our traditional overnight camps about 250 kids and um a traditional overnight camp and then they're broken into villages which is about 45 to 50 kids and those villages are divided by age and gender um and so they're kind of a small camp um feel in that sense um and then yeah and then they can do multiple sessions if they want we offer busing um from brooklyn and uh, manhattan area and then um there's also a holdover period between sessions so if families want to do multiple sessions they can do a holdover period um, and come visit their kid in between um camp uh, but that is uh, yeah we kind of go on that we don't offer visitations during the two-week session, though. Um, it's like a, a full two-week sessions on there. Terrific. Terrific. Thank you so much. So I want to go over to Surprise Lake Camp. And uh, Adam, you want to take this or Dina and share with us about what makes your camp unique? I'll be happy to. Um, this Surprise Lake Camp it has a wonderful history and tradition. We have been in existence from 1902. We are the longest running Jewish children's camp in the nation. As Dina said, we have 350 acres of property, the mountains, the lake, et cetera. We serve kids that are currently in kindergarten through currently 10th grade. We are divided up into two sides of camp. We have a younger camp and we have an older camp. So we separate out our kids and then with in those two camps, they are broken down into on our main camp into six different units. In our teen camp, they're actually in five different units. Our oldest kids in what we would consider our leadership training program, um, similar to the CIT idea, but we do more than just a counselor and training. It's a, an entire leadership program. So that is part of it. And then each one of our units are divided down slowly into groups, much like Zach described. The history at camp is tremendous. I am the third generation. My kids were fourth generations at my camp. I know that Dina has been there. Dina's kids have been there. But I will tell you, interestingly enough, the generations that I skipped when I returned to camp as a new camper, because there was no real history for like 30, 40, 50 years before me, camp became a very welcoming community. And that's the one thing that surprise that camp tries to stress. Everybody coming in may come in, whether you are a friend or a stranger on that day of arrival, everybody leaves as a member of the family. And that way, that whole summer is built around creating that family. So your activity base is everything else. So we are able to bring you into our environment, show you the appreciation of our family, show you the appreciation of our natural beauty and give you a proud long history that we have pretty much perfected for our sakes over a long period of time. Although it's 
somebody would say that the roots are old. Every tree is a sapling when they come to camp and we help each tree grow. That's lovely. And how, what, how do you work with your sessions? Is it a full summer, partial, partial, partial so, summer? So this coming, this summer, summer of 2022, we actually have two sessions. One is a five week session, the first five weeks. And then one is a three week session. You can come for either or, or you can come for a combination of both. And then following our three week session, we actually run a five day, what we consider get your feet wet, like a mini session for new families that wanna just try it out for a smaller period of time after their day camp experience is over so that it's not a conflict for those kids that go to day camp and are just on the cusp of deciding whether or not sleepaway camp is for them or not for them. Nice, so you give it a, an easy way for people to kind of try it, experience it for a little bit and uh, know, what, know what to expect. Exactly. Lovely, lovely. Well, thank you. Thank you for sharing that about that family feel. <laughs> I'm gonna turn now to Phil. Phil, can you share with us about Camp Wachusett? Sure, uh, Camp Wachusett's been in existence since 1903 and um, we're a small camp. We have 45 to 50 boys, uh, ages eight to 15. Our, we really um, emphasize friendship and the golden rule, treat others as you would like to be treated, and also respect for the outdoors. So we have um, land and water activities, and we also send out overnight hiking and canoeing trips into the Adirondack Mountains surrounding Green Mountains. And we, the old saying, you know, uh, leave only footstep, uh, footprints and take only memories. We want to leave places better than we found them. And it's a great opportunity for boys who might not have a lot of access to water or rural areas to uh, learn an appreciation for that. And as well, um, we don't have um, electronic devices at camp. So the boys really interact with each other. They learn great social skills. They learn a lot about teamwork, but also they develop as individuals. Um, our activities we have beginning intermediate and um, advanced um, achievements in each of those activities. And the boys also are uh, free to sign up um, for activities that they choose, which is great. That's wonderful. And did you, I'm not sure if you shared how long the camp experience is. Is it, do you have sessions? Are there options? Is it a one session? Yeah. Yes, um, we, we're operating for six weeks this year. And uh, we can have two week sessions, three weeks, four weeks, and six weeks. Terrific. So a lot of, a lot of options based on what you may, may want for your child. And it's all boys, ages, mm -hmm. say it again, from, say the ages again? Eight to 15. Eight to We're 15. not really competitive athletically, but we have team sports and really with the philosophy of sportsmanship and fun. Fantastic. That's great. So thank you for that. I'm going to jump over to Gia. Can you share with us the uniqueness of Independent Lake Camp? Yes. Um, so I guess we should just start out with some, some quick stats to get those out of the way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so um, we're, we're co-ed. Um, we are um, uh, catered to campers age 6 to 16. Um, we are um, just to, a reminder, we're based um, in the in Northeast Pennsylvania, so at the top of the Pocono Mountains. Um, we are a session-based camp. Um, and so we have three sessions this summer. We start our summer with a two-week session, and then we go to a three-week and another three-week. Um, many of our campers combine those to make a longer stay, to do a, a five-week session or a six-week session um, when they when they combine them. Um, depending on what session you're looking at, we're anywhere from 350 to 550 campers. Um, and we are a fully elective-based program. So that's um, the, the most that I want to talk about right now. Um, so we, um, it's a pretty awesome. Um, I actually grew up in this program, um, so it's very dear to my heart. Um, we um, get, we 
basically allow our campers to, to choose their most favorite things and the things that they want to grow and thrive in um, and, and concentrate on during their stay at camp. And we we help them with that, especially our, our younger campers. We, we help, help guide them and go down the list because we do have a really big list of activities for them to choose from. So, so we, we help, help them uh, kind of narrow it down. Um, they go through a whole camper orientation. Um, they have a check it out day where they get to try things before they commit to them. Uh, and eventually they'll narrow that down to three, um, what we call primes um, that they take every day. And they're more um, goal oriented and instructional um, so that they can build upon things and kind of leave the session um, with something on our, uh, our performance day, either um, building a big a project or a skill or a performance putting together. Um, and then they have three additional periods during the day that they change every day. So it's this really nice balance to be able to try something new, maybe a little something outside the box um, of something they've never tried before with their new friends that they've made. Um, and we've got everything from uh, flying trapeze and circus, um, sports and fitness, magic, performing arts, um, dance, uh, fine arts, digital arts and movie making, role playing games and Dungeons and Dragons, Aerial Adventures High Ropes course, our 100 acre lake, which is, you know, water skiing and this huge inflatable park and pool and all of that. Um, and uh, as well as horseback riding and um, all the other things that I'm that I'm forgetting in the moment. Um, but <laughs> um, so much, so it, it much. really, it really um, provides this really kind of like full program for them during the day where they can make all these different friend groups. Um, and then in the evening, they get to do um, more traditional kind of like campy activities for our evening activity. Um, and so that's, that's kind of their full day there. Um, one of the pretty special things um, about Independent Lake Camp um, is that um, we do, um, get 10 to 15 percent international campers oftentimes um at, you know covid years aside with international travel um that, that kind of messed up our percentages a little bit um but <laughs> um we we do get a lot of international campers and campers from from all over the u.s and so um it really is this kind of like nice melting pot um, of, of campers. Um, we were founded over 30 years ago on the principles of celebrating human diversity. And that philosophy goes through everything that we do. We really try to um, you know, support the campers in their individual choice of things. So we oftentimes say we're an and camp. You can come, you are, can be a basketball player and a Dungeons and Dragons player. You don't have to choose, you can be both. <laughs> so that, that's a big part of our philosophy. Very nice. Thank you so much for sharing that. So I want to go over to Lori. You you represent quite a number of camps, um, but share with me, you know, the, the philosophy behind them and, and a little bit about what makes them special. Sure. So these 38 camps in Maine um, are absolutely wonderful, and many of them are over 100 years old. And we have campers coming from every US state and more than 30 countries abroad. So it's nice. You'll definitely find some local friends to stay in touch with and see during the year, but then some friends from further, further away that you can connect with on FaceTime and other things during the year. Um, we have camps that have campers um, as small as 82 campers. And then we have camps that'll have up to 500 campers. So really, um, each camp is so different, whether you want a fully elective program, we have that. If you want something that's more artsy, we have that. Once more nature, we have that, or more sports, we have that. But every single one of our camps is set on a beautiful lake and the campers have the opportunity for daily waterfront activity. And I think that's one of the biggest distinguishing factors of going to camp in Maine is these big, beautiful, vast lakes that the campers are on every single day. They're water skiing, they're wakeboarding, they're, um, oh my God, canoeing, swimming, you know, you name it, sailing. And actually it was great. My daughter, my older daughter learned to sail at her main camp and we were on vacation once and she said, oh, let's go sailing. And I said, I don't know how to sail. And she said, I do. I learned to camp. I'll take you. So, um, you know, that's amazing. And I've seen videos of them water skiing and they're just getting the opportunity to do things that they don't necessarily get to do at home in, you know, wherever they are, New York or California or Florida or wherever state you're coming from. And um, I think that the campers get to really enjoy things that they already know that they love and they also get to have new experiences. 
So I think the natural beauty is one of the most distinguishing characteristics of going to camp in Maine with the smell of pine in the air and the vast fields. I think that it is close to New York, um, which is really nice. People can get there by um, plane, by bus or by car and the camps help the families organize how their campers are gonna come to camp and get home. And it's really a transformative, um, transportive experience. Um, a mom I once helped said, you know, some people said, I don't know if I want to send my kid to camp in Maine, but I said, when I go on vacation, I pick the place that's going to offer me the best experience. And so that's why I want to send my child to Maine, because I think that they're going to get to explore this whole other state that is different from where we live. And, um, I think the kids get to take great trips. They get to go out of camp and walk around a beautiful coastal town like Booth Bay Harbor, or they get to hike in Acadia National Park or raft on the Allagash River. And these are amazing experiences, even a blueberry picking trip. And these are things that the parents get to enjoy too when they come to visit for visiting day weekends. Um, you know, it really is the foodie capital of the Northeast. So it's delicious food, of course, lobster and blueberries and whoopie pies. But, um, you know, I've had some amazing experiences, you know, going throughout the state to Kenny Bunkport, to Portland, to Acadia National Park, and just really making the most of it. So I think that it's a wonderful experience for the campers to have this other place that they can come and call their summer home away from home and just feel off their screens, connecting with nature, making new friends, and um, just enjoying what, what the camp offers. And one more thing I'll mention is, um, in addition to the fun activities and the great um, programs that the kids get to do, they also um, get to learn about giving back and participating in social action initiatives that a lot of our camps bring into the camp and take on and teach the campers that a lot of times the campers will then bring back to their hometowns with them. So I think it's really an incredible experience and just an investment of a lifetime that keeps going. That's wonderful. Thank and, you. Know, I didn't mention, sorry, that our camps, you can go um, sessions range from two to eight weeks. The most popular are probably two weeks, three to four weeks and seven weeks. And it's for campers ages seven to 17. Now, would you recommend since you represent multi, many different camps that people could get in touch with you and that you can guide them to the right camps? Yes, exactly. So um, I've worked, as I mentioned, with these camps for 10 years and um, I'm with them in person quite often during the summer. I'm in Maine at all the camps, but also we're you know, constantly on an internal listserv talking and it's a great way that the camp directors are able to collaborate and share best practices. And um, yeah, and I just help connect the families to the best camps that'll work for them. Wonderful. I'm actually gonna share all, all of um, our wonderful panelists' contact information so that you know, you can get more in touch with them and find out more information about their camp as well. I mean, one thing, and I'm, I'm going to start off with you, Lori, that, um, you know, I hate to discuss, but it's the elephant in the room is COVID. Because, yeah. um, of course, parents are interested to know what are your safety protocols? You know, what are your rules around vaccination? So, Lori, can you kick off that conversation for us? Yeah. Absolutely. I would say that Maine camps really have been at the forefront of COVID mitigation efforts um, since the pandemic has started. Actually, in 2020, when most camps nationwide did not run, Maine camps did. We had the support from the governor and from the state and the CDC. And um, we had 15 of our camps run and run successfully mitigating any COVID outbreak. And I think that um, we, you know, did a great job of bubbling and having access to, you know, the best in tests and CDC standards and operations and things like that. And so we did it in 2020. We did it again in 2021. We're ready in 22. Um, in terms of, I saw someone ask a question and I'm sure each panelist can answer. Um, some of our camps have sent letters to families saying that they are mandating vaccines and boosters. And some of our camps have not yet made that decision because they're waiting to, and the ones that made that decision made that decision because if that doesn't align with your family's values, we wanna give you the chance to make other summer plans. We don't wanna spring that on anyone. And the camps that haven't decided that, um, you know, say they wanna wait until closer to the summer to see what's happening in the world, to see if this pandemic turns to an endemic and we learn to live with it or not. But I will say that we have, so many um, experts on site at all of our camps and for main camp experience as an organization who are at the forefront of you know inventing these tests from abbott labs to um you know counseling state governments and telling our directors you know this is how you can do it safely and you know we have done of course testing prior to getting to camp testing on arrival testing within a few days testing a week later 
And at that time it was pod camp where campers are, you know, in a limited group. So there's limited exposure, but then being able to open it up um, more broadly. So I do think that main camps and you can read articles in the New York Times and Wall Street Journal and AP about the way that they've handled COVID I think has been top notch. Terrific, thank you for that. I know it's, it's on so many people's minds for sure. Phil, do you wanna share with us how your camp has, is dealing with COVID? Uh, yes, in the off season, um, I live in Virginia and I am uh, the vice president of operations at a continual care retirement community. And I'm also a licensed um, nurse, nursing home administrator. So right from the get go, I was very involved in um, COVID and prevention of, you know, um, COVID prevent preventative measures. Um, also, we have an excellent RN nurse that is uh, um, associated with Camp Wachusett. We are also one of the very few camps that was open in 2020. We operated on a shorter season and uh, required testing, of course. There were no vaccines during that summer, but we were very fortunate being a small camp and uh, my background gave me the confidence to go ahead and move forward. And 2021, we had all, our counselors were all vaccinated. Um, and most of our campers that were of, of age to be vaccinated were vaccinated. We did rapid testing during the summer, um, especially after um, maybe two or three days after a changeover day. We wore masks. Uh, up until those, you know, when it was critical to do so in 2021. We relaxed it after we had the test results. Um, being a small camp, again, was advantageous in a way because uh, fewer potential for, um, for bringing in the, um, you know, the having an issue. But also, um, we were like a quarantine in and of ourselves. Last summer, we did go ahead and go on some outdoor trips um, overnight trips, uh, but we were careful about where we went. We didn't do as many day trips and things like we used to do. Uh, this year, we're not going to require vaccinations, but it appears from what I experienced in 2021 that most people were did it voluntarily. If someone is not vaccinated, we require testing. I said, thank you for that update. <laughs> Um, Dina and Adam, what can you share with us about your COVID protocols and what to expect for this summer? So at Surprise Like Camp, for this coming summer, we are a fully vaccinated environment. Health and safety of our kids and our camp community is of the utmost importance. So our campers, our staff members, our volunteers, our families that may come in to visit and tour camp, man it's mandated to be vaccinated. Um, we have already told our families this, and that is the way that we are going to do our best to get back to what is known as the traditional camping model. We ran camp last summer, um, as, as everybody else described. We had to deal with the potting and the masks when indoors or things of that nature. Um, ma excuse me, vaccines were not mandated last summer because there were some questions about it. And when I say mandated vaccines, I wanna be really careful to say that based on CDC guidelines and the medical staff that we are working with, we will determine whether that does or does not include boosters, only because there are a certain population right now today where boosters are not available to them, to that under 12 population. If that should change before camp starts, we will have to revisit that but right now if you come to surprise i can either to work or to play you're vaccinated terrific thank you for that zach how about at frost valley yeah uh, thank you so we are also requiring all eligible campers and staff to uh, be vaccinated as well um, and so and if you're eligible for the booster then that is required as well um, and so that can change like the eligibility can change um, and so we uh like that will like the eligibility when that changes that will also align with our requirement um and so um yeah that that was a decision we made back in december again to give families a chance to find a camp that's right for them if that is something that they didn't want um but for us we felt like that is the you know the best way to keep our families 
safe and uh, so and healthy and um, and so moving forward in that way. Um, we were able to run camp last summer, um, 2020. Uh, overnight camps were not allowed um, for New York to run, and so, um, but last summer we were able to run successfully um, with masks and potting and testing, um, and all that will still be part of uh, camp this summer. Maybe a little bit loosened compared to where we were at last year, but still um, have that in some capacity. Um, Again, like the, the safety and the health of our campers and our staff are, are our number one priority. And so this is a way that we feel like we can we can do that. Perfect. Thank you. Gia. Oh, sorry. I just realized I was unmuted that whole time. <laughs> um okay, so uh, I don't want to dwell too much on 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 COVID stuff. Um I I I know that um you know, most of us have have started talking about kind of what we've uh, how we approached it last summer, um, and are sort of under the understanding that um, for for this summer, um, you know, we might all, all have these these plans going into it, but we still have a lot of time where that where that can change, um, and so um, everyone should sort of just be under that sort of um, mindset that you know, depending on um, uh, different levels of risk and how things change, um, but just be prepared for protocol changes as well. Um, so for, for us, um, last summer, um, we did uh, sort of do that more controlled environment um, situation where we did not leave camp for trips or anything like that. At. Um, we did our multi multi uh, part testing of the the pre arrival test and the on arrival test and the on camp test, um, and you know we had a, a great successful summer working with our our outside um, you know testing company and our uh, on site medical staff and and it was a big group effort from everyone um, and I always I always say that you know I, I thank all of our leadership staff for um, accommodating all of our our COVID plans and making this successful summer um, for all of our campers um, as far as vaccinations for us for this summer um, we are um, um, mandating it for our staff like we did last summer. Um, for our campers at this point, we're strongly re recommending it. We do, again, take this sort of individualized approach to families. So although, um, you know, 98% of our families are are on board with, you know, um, vaccination and all this, we do have a small percentage of our returning families um, for one reason or another that vaccination might not be right for them. Um, and so for those families, we do have a personalized conversation, um, you know, with uh, with a director um, of how, how they're approaching camp and vaccination um, for this upcoming summer. So that's the point that we're at with that. Terrific. Thank you so much. So I just wanted to um, move away from COVID and quickly go to each of you. I want you to tell me what is your favorite activity at camp? <laughs> what is the thing that either you love to do at camp or you love to watch kids do at camp? Um, I know there's probably a list of a hundred in your mind because there are so many fun things, but I want people to be able to envision it. And I think, you know, by sharing what you love, they can do that. Let me, let me kick it off with Phil. Okay. Um, <laughs> I probably enjoy spending time down on the waterfront. I went to the camp actually as a camper and enjoyed water skiing. And, you know, I will find myself occasionally driving the ski boat. And I enjoy see when I'm doing that, I just enjoy being out on the lake, watching kids um, improve their skills. Many who've never skied before wind up being able to ski and enjoying it to, you know, come out and free, free time ski, but also seeing the sailboats out there, the swimming classes and just people out enjoying the lake. So that that's nice. what I would. Nice. The lake is a lot of fun and certainly not something that most kids are doing during the year. So it's really very exciting. Zach, what about you? Yeah, I think for me, my favorite thing to do is uh, we call it creaking, which is ultimately just playing in the, the mountain streams. And so whether it's like rock paint or just putting your feet in the water or whatever that is, that's one of my, like it's just, yeah, it's one of my favorite things is being immersed in that. Um, I think my favorite thing to watch campers do is the zip line um, or any ropes course activity. I think just like the nervousness and like the uncomfortable part of, of that and kind of in their growth zone piece and then watching them conquer that is it's such a cool moment and a really awesome moment to watch. And so um, I think that's one part that I'd like to be part of um, and, and spectate. 
I love it. I think you're highlighting two wonderful things about overnight camp, really the opportunity to be in a whole new environment where you can enjoy nature um, and then overcoming your fears and, and seeing how capable you can be. So two really great, great things. Gia? Now you have to unmute. Gia. I think Gia may be frozen. So Dina? Sure, thank you. I love this question. Um, and I love what Phil said and what Zach said, because I think there is, you know, there's something to be said for the simple things. And there's something to be said for watching a child who's never done something, whether it's, you know, getting on a paddleboard or a, a sailboat or climbing a rock tower, all things I've tried because my campers have done it, doing things alongside your camper, you know, a camper who wants to swim a mile in the lake and doing it alongside with them because they don't know if they can do it. So those are the things that I love watching um, or being a part of, but I have to tell you, it really is the impromptu, spontaneous kind of things, whether it's, you know, a water fight or a paint fight or, you know, something that the kids just like jump into without there being anything structured. When you see, and I'm telling you, I work with a lot of teenagers. So this is the age where I think it's even more magical than it is with a young child because a young child is open to that. But when you see a teenager with just this, genuine smile and joy and you hear the laughter and you see the excitement on their faces and you witness what they're doing in the in the connections that they're making with one another just because they're doing something spontaneous and unstructured there really is a magic in that and it's the one thing that I've always enjoyed about being at camp is and it's something that you don't necessarily have outside of the camp environment. So it's really just those little magical moments. I love that. Yeah. And certainly as a parent of a teenager, seeing them act all magical is truly a blessing <laughs> um, with, with, with so much of the TikTok and everything else. Lori, what can you share as something that you love? Sure. I love when I'm at the camps, I just always jump in and I love doing gymnastics and I like going paddle boarding and doing the cooking and the ropes courses. Um, and some of our camps have some really cool stuff like 3D printing and candle making. Um, but in addition to the regular activities that they can do um, with everything I mentioned and mountain biking, I really love the special event days at camps. Um, I love, you know, college days and Olympics and color war where the kids are all coming together the whole camp and, you know, doing bucket brigade and working together and doing, um, you know, tug of war and things like that. And you see, you know, with the face paint and the tutus and the spirit. And I just love how it just, it just invades your soul and you're just become, you know, you're just with all of this community and it's so much fun and it's just the best feeling ever. So that's, that's my favorite. That's amazing. That's a, you painted a wonderful picture. Gia? Hi. Um, so I, I, I would, I would be amiss to, to leave out that, um, I actually ran our camp circus department for like 15 years. So I would, I, I, by default have to say that that's probably one of my favorite places on camp. Um, but I, um, I think that really, like what brings like a tear to my eye of just like pure happiness is like on our performance day when the kids just like shine with this pride of like what they've accomplished. Right. Um, and so that might be like, um, you know, completing their, their, their circus act, um, or dropping in on a ramp, um, at the skate park or, um, you know, performing, um, with their bandmates, um, you know, or, or show pulling, pulling their parent into the recording studio and being like, Oh my gosh, look at this song that I mixed. Like, you know, it's just like this, this, this shine that comes out of them. Um, that's kind of just extra special on that day. Not to say that we don't see it on all these other days as well. You know, when you, when you travel, I'm sure every, all the directors know when you travel around camp and you see all these these special moments, you know, when you, when you're, you just happen to see like somebody get that trick for the first time or happen to see them like climb to the top of the wall for the first time, you know, um, it's just, it's just, it's why we do it. You know, um, it's, it's just, it's, 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 it's just so special. <laughs>
I love, I love it. I, I, I love hearing all of your stories about the excitement of camp and the, what the children are able to do. And I appreciate your sharing it with us. I feel like, you know, my heart is full with all of these um, feelings and my mind is full with all of these experiences. I want to jump over to some of the questions that we have from our attendees. Um, Katie wanted to know, you know, she's interested, she's thinking about a single sex camp. Um, but she was wondering, you know, what the benefits are to co-ed versus single sex camps. Um, so is there someone who would like to, I mean, maybe Phil can talk a little about single sex and Laurie, I see that you'd like to answer something about the co-ed experience or maybe you, in your camps, you have both. Yeah. Did Laurie want to get started? I'm sorry. Laurie? Yes. So um, I think that the beautiful thing about it is that people love what they experience. And it's funny, when I was looking at camp for my two kids, I didn't care if it was co-ed or single sex. You know, for me, I wanted seven weeks. So I was open to either. The people who go to an oral girls camp, for example, say that there is nothing like the sisterhood that is formed between the girls who attend the camp. They're not worried about the hair and the makeup and the stuff and the boys, you know, they're focused on each other and growing and having fun together. And a lot of the camps have sister programs where there's a big sister and a little sister or a big brother and a little brother. And it's just so warm and you know everyone in the camp and you know, from generation to generation, that's how it goes. And for the boys, all boys camps, I often hear, my son just wants to play sports or he just wants to focus on you know printing or whatever it is. He doesn't wanna be bothered by the girls. So people really like that experience. And then from the co-ed side, people say, you know what, this is replicate of the real world. And so I, and my son, likes to play with girls and boys. And so when he goes to arts and crafts or whatever it is, you know, I like that he can be with people of both genders. Um, and especially when you have siblings, some people like that they're at the same camp, whereas other people prefer them at separate camps and then they get to see each other at like a brother sister lunch or a carnival or things like that. So I think that there are a lot of benefits to both. That's good. Yeah, lots of pros and cons. Phil, do you want to share as a camp director of an all boys camp? Sure, um, I, that was really well said. Um, and also we look at it as, I guess, a real bonding that comes out of these friendships. And, you know, our camp uh, has a, a, a saying, it's a Cherokee word, Unalihi, which stands for a place of friends, um, or that's its interpretation. And that's what we are. But also I think that, you know, really nice friendships come about with older and younger kids as well as um, the staff and the boys. And those are things that um, they, they want to come back each year. And it's like a, a home away from home. Also, they maybe it gives an opportunity really to concentrate on advancing in different areas of interest and activities. Terrific. Thank you for those perspectives. Um, David wanted to know, can you speak to the geographies of your campers? So maybe we can quickly go around and you don't have to give exact percentages, but they were interested in, you know, maybe are they mostly from Boston, Connecticut, New York City, um, Long Island? Um, you want to, who would like to get started? Zach, why don't you get started with that question? Yeah, absolutely. I'd say 70% uh, of our campers come from New, or in the New York State and New York City area. And then about 25 from the New Jersey area, and then 5% sprinkled from everywhere else. Um, so that's it, that's our primary geography of campers who come to our camp. Terrific, thank you. Gia? Hi, um, we are um, generally about 70% um, from the New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, Connecticut area, um, where uh, about 15% um, from other states, um, heavily of like Washington, D.C., Boston, Florida, California. Um, then, like I said before, 15% international. Um, so good, good spread there. <laughs> good. Thank you. Dina and Adam? I would say, and it, you know, it's similar to what Gia um pretty much just said a lot of our campers, the primary area is going to be, you know, the tri-state area um, and then, you know, branching out. Um, we have over the years, since I was a camper, the, you know, it used to be the five boroughs of, of New York and Long Island. And that was kind of it. Now it's so widespread that we get campers that come from California, Alaska, 
Tennessee, Florida, Virginia, they come from everywhere. They come from, you know, the Northeast and they come from the South. They come from everywhere because there are places, and I didn't know this growing up, but there were places that didn't have summer camp. And, you know, it was kind of like, okay, everybody heads, you know, kind of North because that's what kids do in the summer. So I was excited to meet people who were from everywhere. Um, my kids have had the similar experience and like many of your camps, you know, our staff come from all over the world. So we also get campers that will come from Israel and Poland and, you know, international, like Gia had mentioned. And I think it's a great experience for kids to meet not only staff, but also kids from everywhere, because sometimes we get caught up in our own little bubble and we think this is the only world that exists until we meet people from other you know, cultures and things. And I think it's, a. I think camp does that wonderfully um, across the board in introducing people to, you know, many different people from all over. Thank you. That's great. Lori? Yes. Um, as I had mentioned also, we have campers from every U.S. state and 30 countries abroad, campers and staff. And um, I would say there's definitely a nice concentration from New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, Massachusetts, so you can keep in touch and see friends during the year, but then also Florida, California, DC, um, and e really every state. So it's a nice, it's a really nice mix. Phil, last but not least. <laughs> the Washington DC area, Virginia, Maryland, um, New Jersey, Connecticut, New York, Massachusetts, Pennsylvania, and France. Florida is an outlier. Um, so just some, uh, and, and the uh, staff, uh, France, Barbados, and mostly the Maryland, DC, Connecticut, New York areas. Terrific, thank you. We had a question and I just wanna see a, a show of hands. They wanted to know um, how many of you have buses from Long Island? You just put your hands up if your camp has a bus that goes from Long Island. All right, so you got to go a little further, <laughs> a little out of Long Island to, to catch the bus. Um, and then just quickly about um, diversity. Someone asked about diversity, racial diversity, socioeconomic diversity. Um, if we can just kind of quickly touch upon that and I can, we can get started with Zach. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, so for us, we have numerous partnerships from around the New York City and at Newark, New Jersey area. Um, to just offer a camp for kids who might not be able to afford it and have the opportunity to do so. So we um, serve about, we give out about uh, $700,000 worth of scholarship for campers to, to come to camp. Um, so in terms of socioeconomic, um, allowing, making sure that it's accessible to all. Um, in terms of our breakdown, I think it all depends on the, the different programs. Um, we can be anywhere from like 58% of our campers are white. Um, and then um, kind of again, either mixed race or um, black or, you know, kind of all other races as well that can come to camp. Um, and so it's kind of a, a, a good blend, um, but I'd say we're about 50%, 58% in our traditional array camp. And then looking at all the different programs, we'd say that it's primarily more white uh, in terms of race. Terrific, thank you. Lori? I would say across our 38 camps, we have um, nice diversity. Everyone, of course, is welcome and encouraged to attend, and it's a nice mix. Terrific. Phil? Uh, well, we're a camp where everyone is accepted. Uh, we also have a, a scholarship fund that um, people can apply for who, you know, wouldn't otherwise be able to afford the camp and the experience. And we have a, a variety. We're, we're diverse when it comes to background and ethnicity. Perfect, Gia. Yeah. Um, so, so I'll uh, reiterate our that our camp was founded on the principles of celebrating human diversity uh, over thirty years ago. So it's not like a new thing for us. Um, you know, if you um, look at our materials and our website, um, you'll see that we have a lot of um, a lot of variety in in faces and um, a lot of variety in interests. Um, so. Um, something that we, we hold in high regard. Terrific, thank you. And Dina and Adam? Sorry, couldn't mute, unmute myself. Um, yeah, I'm gonna echo basically what everybody else said. Although we are a Jewish camp, it's not a requirement to be Jewish to come to our camp. We, are, we have been welcoming 
families from all different backgrounds. We've been welcoming children from all different backgrounds. Um, we are very inclusive. Um, and I think the one thing that I love about camp, whether it's ours or some of these others I'm hearing, is that that's pretty much the direction that most camps have, you know, gone into as a whole. You know, we are a family and we want our campers to feel like they're part of our family. And so there's there's nothing, there's no judgment, there's no exclusions, there's no anything. You don't have to be a specific person to come to our camp. You just have to want to come to camp. Well, I think that is a wonderful place to end our, our time together. I want to thank all of you for being here. Lori from Maine Camp Experience, Zach from Frost Valley YMCA, Phil from Camp What Choose It, Gia from Independent Lake Camp, and Dina and Adam from Surprise Lake Camp. I've shared all their emails uh, addresses in the chat. I will also share that with you in an email you will get tomorrow as well. And we, as I mentioned before, we recorded it. So you will get the recording as well. So you can watch it again and you can share it with, with, with your family, your friends, your community. We encourage you to do so. As you can see from uh, our wonderful panelists here, camp is a wonderful experience for your children. Sleepaway camp is a very special experience with incredible activities and incredible opportunity for your child to grow in so many different ways. So thank you all for being here with us. Uh, panelists, thank you so much for sharing with us about your wonderful camps. I can tell how much you love them. And it's really a joy to, to see you share them with our attendees. And thank you so much to our attendees for spending your time with us today. I hope you found a camp that piques your interest and that you um, speak with them afterwards and find the perfect place for your child summer. Thanks again for joining us, all of you, and please stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll look forward to seeing you on a future webinar. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you.